When I was about 16 through 30-ish, I was a pretty big fan of Tenacious D. Big enough that it became kind of my trademark in the local karaoke night in my hometown pubs to sing their songs, and some folks even referred to me as Jack Black if they didn't know who I actually was. Which I enjoyed, not gonna lie. Now, of course, I grew out of their particular brand of nonsense several years ago, although I still think the uh, early stuff totally slaps. And uh, Jack Black has another brand these days that has been built around him, one of Kung Fu Pandas and the King of the Coopers. So one of overwhelmingly family-friendly wholesomeness. But the man himself is obviously a zealous Democrat, or at least he wants to appear that way. Of course, as of the other night at one of their gigs, when he laughed at the other guy from the D, Kyle Gass, making a birthday wish that a Trump... Uh, gunman not miss a second time we're not really talking about them so much anymore now we're talking about the system that has allowed this to become the kind of normal rhetoric in a country that is supposed to be civilized the internet obviously has a lot to do with this but radicalization is real and the people who say that we are the ones who issue threats when we don't like Star Wars movies or, or Doctor Who episodes, are absolutely always the ones who are actually guilty of issuing threats and vile language. Now, at last, that has become the story. That's what everyone's talking about. The left's rhetoric. So, while that is the case, you are going to see a lot of desperate reshuffling from celebrities and what's happening right before our eyes is kind of beautiful let's explore hello welcome back to will of the fans my name is will see what i did there hope you're having a lovely lovely day we're going to check out an article and a few tweets and uh, have a look at what exactly is going on in the aftermath of what happened with the big orange man himself and of course the D. So um, there's a lot of fallout from it, a lot of backpedaling and rightly so because the people who are truly responsible for this, if we are to believe the story that it appears to be the most likely to be true, the people who started off talking about this guy this man, this good man, Trump, and calling him all the things they've called him are absolutely guilty in some form of causing what happened. So we're going to explore that. And if you're liking the video, then like the video. I know it's not normally the kind of thing that I do, but I feel like it's time to just take the gloves off and go for it. So help others to find it in the algorithm if you would. And don't forget to subscribe to Will of the Fans if you'd like more news, reviews, commentary, and a rebellion. Courtesy of me and the Griff Force. Les Lesion Reactionnaire. All right then, you willies and fannies. Let's go to that park place. The sincerity of Kyle Gass and Jack Black is questioned after Gass apologizes for wishing a second assassination attempt against L45. <clears throat> so, this is, uh, you know, this is an interesting situation because I always figured that these guys, no matter their weird demonic imagery, that was all kind of just harmless fun. And yet, I keep seeing the same stuff coming out of these kinds of people. It's starting to make me question some stuff, especially as I was a former atheist. Now I'm more of an agnostic. You do tend to see a lot of the same iconography surrounding the radicals, the degenerates, and the people who issue vile language that potentially incites others to acts of horror. So I don't know anymore how I feel about these gentlemen. Um... And that's fine. It won't be the first time I've had to walk away from someone I've been a fan of. But uh, let's read the article. Kyle Gass, the co-founder of Tenacious D alongside Jack Black, issued an apology after what he said the other day. I have to be a bit careful. It is still YouTube. Gass's comments came during Tenacious D's uh, spicy meatball tour. Original. In Sydney, Australia, following the attempt against President DT during a campaign event in Butler, Pennsylvania. The assassin's bullet prevent, uh, sorry, failed to 
do its job for YouTube safety. So YouTube safety. But pierced his ear when he failed to assassinate the press. He did unfortunately take down a guy called Corey Compratore, who used his body to shield his wife and daughter. That, I'm afraid, no matter what you say, left, that's heroism. That is the oldest definition of heroism. That's masculinity. That is manhood. Jumping in front of your wife and daughter to save them and paying the ultimate price to do it. Respect. Sincere, solemn respect, sir. Anyway, during the D show, uh, the band celebrated Gas's birthday with Black singing happy birthday and a birthday cake being delivered by a man in a robot costume. And then Gas was told to make a wish and he said, don't miss Trump next time. Now, if you want to see that clip, you can either watch it on this article or you can check out the re most recent WTF Live where we watched the clip and reacted to it. Anyway, uh, it does seem that the two of them are laughing quite heartedly after the comments. Now... I'm not going to tell you that it's not okay to make jokes like this. I've made my share of sick jokes. In fact, in England, it's kind of tradition that when a celebrity snuffs it, you pretty much make all the sickest jokes you possibly can. There were even, I don't know if I've ever seen so many jokes or heard so many jokes than I did after Princess Diana sadly was gone. But uh, they were all taken in the context of yeah, we're really sad and we're kind of laughing through the pain. Um, but this isn't. This is rubbing salt in the wound. This is a bunch of people who despise Donald Trump. They have TDS. They seriously can't stand him. Now, of course, Black came out and basically disavowed this and even said, and it seems that they got deported from Australia and that there were a hell of a lot of comments coming in saying... You guys are not welcome to play at our venue anymore after saying that. So Jack Black issued a comment on his Instagram. God, why do people use Instagram for this when they have X? He says, I was blindsided by what was said at the show on Sunday. I would never condone hate speech or encourage political violence in any form. Nah, don't know about that. You certainly did do that. After much reflection, I certainly no longer feel it is appropriate to continue the tenacious detour and all future creative plans are on hold. Somebody called this guy, somebody called this guy and said, do you realize that you are Bowser? That you are the Kung Fu Panda? You can't be tied to this, you idiot. Issue an apology right now and then cancel your tour. You're done. And then uh, sometime later after WTF Live or before, but I don't check Instagram because I'm not a girl. Um, Kyle Gass posted... Uh, the line I improvised on stage Sunday night in Sydney was highly inappropriate, dangerous, and a terrible mistake. I don't condone violence in any kind in any form against anyone. What happened was a tragedy, and I'm incredibly sorry for my severe lack of judgment. I profoundly apologize to those I've let down and truly regret any pain I've caused. All right, so you're bending the knee. Now, this is where it gets dangerous, of course, because cancel culture is a thing. I don't want to engage in cancel culture. I don't want to stop people being able to make jokes. I don't. I don't think that that's the right answer either. That's what their side tries to do. However, there is a difference between criticizing movies and TV shows and wishing for someone who survived his own execution to not survive. That's just a different thing entirely. That's another level. And if you can't see the difference, then you are truly lost. Anyway, Educated Hillby uh, Billy came along and issued this uh, claim. He said, um, let me explain to people who've never worked a concert venue before. After Jack Black and his band Tenacious D celebrated the near assassination of the T-Man on Saturday, they got about 10,000 calls and texts from concert venues they'd booked, cancelling their reservations. You see, these places have to carry insurance to cover any mass casualty event. Some places, it's literally the law, they have to have a certain level of coverage. Yeah, so you are going to get cancelled. Unfortunately, it's, it's corporate policy for most of these places. That insurance is very, very expensive, as you can imagine, as you can be talking about thousands of people and potential liability. Insurance companies will even ask you to take out additional insurance for a specific event over and above the base insurance the venue carries. So you're paying through the wazoo and hoping those ticket sales will cover it. So 
then we had uh, something else. He then questioned, what do you think happened the second Jack Black and company said this? The threat levels went off the charts. Phone calls to the concert venues, text emails, social media posts. All hell broke loose and there's no way in F these venues could afford the level of security these insurers were now wanting or could afford the new insurance bill since they were going to be asked to pay. So no, Jack Black's heart didn't magically grow three sizes that day. He didn't have any self-reflection. He didn't suddenly have a moral compass. He got his tour cancelled. He lost money. We, he won't be getting on stage high on the good weed and shrooms like he does famously and jamming with his buddies for millions of dollars and fans fanning his ego. He will fly back from Australia, sit in his mansion, getting high, feeling incredibly put upon to have to pretend to have morals. Now that sounds sadly, even as a fan of Jack Black over the years, that sounds more likely. I mean, the guy is a massive drug user, so that much is certainly true. Former World of Warcraft team lead Mark Kern also shared his thoughts. So it's good. Grums chimes in. And Grums is going to write a book here. So stay with me because I want to get through all of it. It's really good. We're going to go to the original tweet here. Where you can see a picture he accompanied this with of the Overton window shifting. Because it has. Even though it's shifted left. Not up or down. Well, authoritarian. So I suppose up and left. From policy, popular, sensible, acceptable, radical to unthinkable. We are entering that zone now. What does he write then? Well, he writes a lot. So stay with me. After this, I will be finishing the video. So, But this is the meat. This is what otherwise I would have to rephrase and say for him. So it's best to just get it from the guy's mouth. Carl Gauss of Tenacious D apologizes. I can tell you what's happening here, but most aren't ready to hear it. The majority of people don't actually have their own opinions or rather convictions. They only express what's deemed popular or acceptable according to the Overton window of acceptable discourse. What is happening is a great recalibration of that window. For years, we were told it was acceptable to have political violence on the left, mostly peaceful riots. Remember that? And that anything on the right, a punch, simple words, or OK symbols, walking into a building was ultra violent. This is true. The media and celebrities led this narrative and cemented the Overton window firmly in their preferred direction. This is true. The vast majority of people complied. The social pact demands it. It whipped them into mob mentality and people did really mean things to each other. Cancel culture, etc. Because it was acceptable and approved by the narrative. Sound like the rise of some country's political movement you know from history? Oh, well said, Mark. This is how good people turn into bad people. It's also very reminiscent of the rise of the Empire in Star Wars. Um, but after the actual visceral failures, the Biden debate, that window began to shift. No amount of cognitive bias could prevent people from going, this is weird, we have been lied to. COVID revelations helped too. It, it became acceptable for people for the first time in a long time to question the narrative. What, like, we've all been doing for literally years. Come on then, you're welcome to come and join. They can now talk about it at the office, at home, in public and social media, yeah. This is true. Thanks to Biden's bungling of his own debate and then this happening to Trump, now it's okay. Now it's finally okay to say, uh, uh, nah, this don't line up. Some of us could see it years ago. And I'm not going to tell anybody who's just showing up now that they're not welcome here. You are welcome to use your brain and you are welcome to use me and my channel or anyone else like me or their channels to corroborate what you have come to believe is probably going on. So when just two weeks after we had the attempted assassination, oh, sorry, so just two weeks later, comma, we had the attempted assassination of the man and people unfortunately did lose their lives or were injured. Nothing squared up anymore. The ultimate violence was not from the right, as they were told, but to the right. The tragedy was real. Some people unaware of what happened continued to reinforce the old Overton window. Now their co-workers and friends and family, free to question for the first time, reacted against them. The public and the media reacted against them. This is what happened to Kyle Gass and Jack Black. They didn't read the room. They didn't catch what was happening to the window and they fell outside of it. The backlash was swift and harsh, not just from the right though, but from the people in their immediate circle. Even the media, who now must pivot as the window corrects itself. There are some who really do believe that the assassination was faked or justified or that the T is really the H. These are the radicals who've been yanking at the Overton window for years and who until now have successfully skewed and skewered it to their side. 
They are the ones who are not apologizing, not de uh, deleting, not retracting, and still gnashing their teeth. They are the ones who wrecked things for a long time. These people are unredeemable, irredeemable, mate. And we should never forgive them for what they did to the country or the world. They're truly destructive, violent, and do not really part. And they're not really part of the social pact. But here is the part most aren't ready to hear. The majority of those people aren't those people. The majority of people aren't those people. They look like them, sound like them, hated like them, and even did some very bad things, but they were told to, programmed to. Again, most people do not have their own strong moral core or opinions. Yeah, the ones that do end up on YouTube. The survival instinct of civilization tells them to just go with the flow. Even when that flow has been hijacked for bad purposes. This particularly happens with women, by the way. The hard part, you're going to have to forgive them. To heal as a country and a nation, you're going to have to let these people change their minds. They will go from saying horrible things and even doing them to wherever we're headed next. Hopefully the next is peace and unity and gradual abandonment of the current woke politics that have divided us and damaged us as a nation. The historical country I mentioned earlier, or others you know, they all changed too. Most people aren't ready to hear that yet, but I suspect this is where Trump is headed and maybe after his speech more will see it. But until then, this is why... Uh, I and others are loudly pointing out people falling outside the moving Overton window and still espousing hate. Some are radicals and some are the masses. I don't want anyone cancelled or fired, but I want the window to shift. Shift back away from the abyss. This is why we have to point it out every time. Especially now, when we have a chance to change that we haven't had in a very, very long time. Beautiful words from Grums. Absolutely 100% do I agree with that. And I'd like to know what you think. So please let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like this video if you've enjoyed it. And of course, subscribe to Will of the Fans if you'd like to see more of me. I'd like to see more of you. I'll be back with another video for you very, very soon. But until then, remember to question everything. Respect the fans. Respect your fellow man. And I'll chat to you next time.